What's going on guys, my name is Suboptimal and in this beginner tutorial we'll go over everything you need to know about 3JS geometries. So taking a look at the 3JS docs, we can see that there's about 20 geometries provided to us out of the box in the 3JS library. So these geometries are some of the most common components we can add to our 3JS scene. Let's take a look at some of them. Here we've got a cube geometry. This is a cone geometry. This is a cylinder geometry. And we've even got some complex geometries like the torus geometry and the torus knot geometry. And of course, each of these geometries has distinct features that we can customize however we like when we create it. Let's get started by adding some of these geometries to our project. Just as a quick heads up, the template code for this video and all future tutorials that I make about 3JS are going to be based on this setup guide video. So if you're sort of confused as to where I'm getting this template code from, just check out the video and you'll be good to go. We're going to create a cylinder and box mesh and put them just side by side. We've got the cylinder mesh taking the cylinder geometry and the cylinder material, and the box mesh is taking the box geometry and the box material. The only thing that we care about for this video is just the geometries. So for both of the meshes, you can see here that I just create a mesh normal material with wireframe set to true. So we can see the individual lines that create these geometries on screen. So now let's actually take a look at what this box geometry is and how it's kind of like getting defined. If you hover over the constructor, you can see that you can pass in about six parameters. Fortunately, 3JS has made all of these parameters optional. So you can see here that all of these have question marks right next to them, height, width, depth, and the other ones as well. And that is because if you go to the actual code where this class is defined, you'll notice that there is a default value uh, set for them. So you actually don't have to pass in anything. You can remove everything, create a box geometry like this, and it should work. But we're going to pass these in just to see what's going on underneath the hood. So we're going to say that our box geometry is of size one by one by one, and that it has one by one segments in the X and Y direction, and it has 16 segments in the Z direction. And of course, our cylinder geometry is going to take in similar parameters. Here we can see that we take the radius top, the radius bottom, the height, as well as the radial segments, the height segments, and a couple of other things. So I'm just going to pass in these parameters for the top radius, bottom radius, height, and segments respectively. Let's take a look at our scene and see what is displayed. Our box geometry has only one X and Y segment, and it has about 16 Z segments. And our cylinder geometry has uh, six radial segments and 16 height segments. And so that's basically how you would go about to creating your geometries and displaying them in a scene. First, you create a geometry, and then you can just work with mesh normal material for now. And you know, you just create your mesh and then you add it to the scene. Now the next question is, what is the point of the second part right here? What is the point of these height segments and these depth segments and these width segments? Why do we need them? If you have a cylinder and you only pass in six segments, it looks more like a hexagon. So it makes sense to pass in maybe like 20 or maybe let's just say 32 radius segments. And if we save that, you'll see that, you know, it's going to start looking more and more like a cylinder. But what's the point of passing in these segments into a cube? That was the question that I had when I first started working with 3JS. You can see here that I've created a box geometry with a vertex shader on top of it. So what that means is that for every single vertices, we're basically adding a function, sending it to the GPU, and we are manipulating the vertices based on some time. This is known as shading in 3JS, and so that's the reason you might want to use width, height, or uh, depth segments is if you want to create these complex shaders. Now this is again not part of this tutorial, but I just want to give you guys an idea of why you might use these extra parameters for your geometries. And just to sort of drive the point home, you can see here that if I remove all the segments, it doesn't look as smooth or as wavy as you might want it to. 
Vue.js actually comes with more than just 20 default geometries out of the box. So these are geometries that are available inside of the examples section. So they're actually a little bit harder to find because they don't auto complete for you, but you can find them. And one of them is this rounded box geometry. And one of them is this teapot geometry. So let's take a look at how you can import these into your project. So in order to import these geometries, what you have to do is uh, go to the examples folder, JSM geometries, and then you'll find them right over here. So if I show you guys the autocomplete, you can see a ton of extra geometries available. And the one I picked for this example is the teapot geometry. Uh, and if we go down here, you can see me creating the rounded box geometry, which takes in a couple of different parameters, very similar to a normal box geometry. But um, here it takes in like the radius. So how rounded you want the geometry to be. And of course, the rest of it is the same. You just create a rounded box mesh and you add it to the scene. And the teapot also takes in some of these uh, other parameters like the size, the segments, but you know, creating it is basically the same. You create the teapot mesh by passing in the geometry and the material, and then you add it to the scene. And of course, that's how I'm able to get these other geometries that are not readily available, but they are hidden in the 3JS examples. So be sure to check those sections out as well if you want to see more cool geometries. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have a little bit of an understanding of 2JS geometries. If you enjoyed this video, then hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more suboptimal content about 3JS and coding for the metaverse. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.